kids with my ex-partner who doesn't want to be identified. I'm supposed to call her Wendy, but her real name's Sharon, so let's just call her Schwendy. All right, anyway. So anyway, we each had a kid. Wendy gave birth to my older son, Henry. I adopted him. I gave birth to Ben. She adopted, adopted him. Wendy had a C-section. I had the vaginal delivery, because I'm the guy. Thank you very much. But, um, <laughs> but I do sometimes feel sorry for my kids, because they have two Jewish mothers. Wouldn't you kill yourself seriously at that time? <laughs> and my mother, so, my mother was so supportive when Henry was born. It was so hard for her because she didn't know how to explain this new grandson to her friends because I hadn't given birth and all of a sudden she has this grandson and Schwendi and I had only been together for about 12 years so no one had any idea what was going on. So she used to tell people, Judith's roommate had a baby and then Judith adopted it. Judith's roommate, she's a lovely girl. She takes in the mail when Judith travels. Uh, she was walking down the street. There was some hypodermic needle around. It happened to have sperm in it. She landed in a vagina. She had a baby. And then Judith adopted the baby. She's 86, my mother. She uh, has a home health aide, which I don't know, has anyone dealt with the home health aide issue? It's very annoying, I gotta tell you, because my mother has the nicest home health aide. She comes in a few hours a day, really helps my mother out, and she's just the most wonderful human being, and all my mother does is complain about her 24-7. Every phone call, I'm like, hey, Ma, what's going on? So she came in, <laughs> and I asked her to dust. Now, she sits on her ass all day long, doesn't do a damn thing. So uh, I walk in the living room about 15 minutes later, there's a dust ball on the floor, there's a doily behind one of the pictures that I had put there on purpose to see if she would... I'm like, Ma, you're planting doilies in the apartment now to catch her red... <laughs> she sits on her ass all day long, doesn't do a damn thing. I asked her to go out and get lettuce, she comes back with cabbage. Who the hell doesn't know the difference between lettuce and cabbage? That was a 20 minute conversation, by the way, the lettuce and cabbage. Yeah, I find her very annoying. She's very negative. You know, everything I say to my mother is just, she's got to get me back. Like, all right, last week I brought the kids to the beach, right? I'm driving home from the beach. I call my mother. She said, what'd you do today? I said, I brought the kids to the beach. Really? They didn't wear any sunscreen? No, Ma, I brought some tinfoil and I laid it down on the sand. <laughs> and then I gave them some Benadryl to put them to sleep. And I got a squirt bottle uh, filled with baby oil and I sprayed them every 10 or 15 minutes. So. I'm on my uh, way to the burn units. Why don't I give you a buzz later and we'll... Uh... I think the only person who annoys me more than my mother, honest to God, the GPS woman. She is the most annoying. Have you ever been in a car with the most... A, she doesn't shut up the entire car ride. Then the minute you don't do what she says, she has a mental breakdown. I cannot... Recalculating route, recalculating route, recalculating route, recalculating route. Re what is the matter with you? I've decided my mother would make a much better GPS woman. Can you imagine? Turn left in 11 miles. Get over there now with your signal on. I want to make sure you're prepared. Make your second right on Elm Street. Drive by Rona Steinblatt's house. I want to make sure she's still alive. I never cared for her. Take a left at the Dairy Queen. Don't go in, they're anti-Semitic. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I love you, my